Hi guys, welcome to the healthcare channel. Today's video we'll mention can hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine cure coronavirus. The use of hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine in COVID-19 is predicated on widespread publicity of small, uncontrolled studies, which suggested that the mixture of hydroxychloroquine with the macrolide azithromycin was successful in clearing viral replication. On March 28, 2020, the FDA issued an emergency use authorization for these drugs in patients if clinical test access was unavailable. Other countries, like China, have issued guidelines allowing the utilization of chloroquine in COVID-19. Several countries are stockpiling the drugs, and shortages of them for approved indications, like for autoimmune disorder and atrophic arthritis, are encountered. Another observational study in 181 patients from France reported that the utilization of hydroxychloroquine at a dose of 600 mg per day wasn't related to a measurable clinical benefit in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia. Our large-scale, international, real-world analysis supports the absence of a clinical advantage of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine and points to potential harm in hospitalized patients with COVID-19. Chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are related to concerns of cardiovascular toxicity. Such propensity for arrhythmia provocation is more often seen in individuals with the structural disorder, and cardiac injury has been reported to occur with high frequency during COVID-19 illness. Pathological studies have pointed to derangements within the vascular endothelium and diffuse endothelin noted across multiple organs in COVID-19. Whether patients with the underlying disorders and people that have de novo cardiovascular injury have a greater predilection to ventricular arrhythmias with chloroquine or its analogues remains uncertain but plausible. COVID-19 is exemplified by initial viral replication followed by enhanced systemic inflammation. The utilization of chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine together with a macrolide is meant to use their antimicrobial properties during a synergistic manner. Macrolides, like azithromycin and clarithromycin, are antibiotics with immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory effects. This study suggested that a better dose of chloroquine represented a security hazard, especially when taken concurrently with azithromycin and OSELTAMIVIR. In another cohort study of 90 patients with COVID-19 pneumonia, Mercuro and colleagues found that the concomitant use of a macrolide was related to a greater change within the corrected court interval. We showed an independent association of the utilization of either hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine with the occurrence of de novo ventricular arrhythmias. In our analysis, which was dominated by patients from North America, we noted that higher BMI emerged as a risk marker for worse in hospital survival. Obesity may be a known risk factor for cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. The four most commonly reported arrhythmias are fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia. Although age, race, and BMI were predictive of an increased risk for death with COVID-19 in our analysis, they weren't found to be related to an increased risk of ventricular arrhythmias on our multivariable multivariate analysis. The sole variables found to be independently predictive of ventricular arrhythmias were the four treatment regimens, alongside underlying disorder and COPD. Thus, the presence of cardiovascular comorbidity within the study population could partially explain the observed risk of increased cardiovascular toxicity with the utilization of chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, especially when utilized in combination with macrolides. During this investigation, according to our previous findings during a smaller cohort of 8,910 patients, we found that ladies and patients being treated with ACE inhibitors but not angiotensin receptor blockers or statins had lower mortality with COVID-19. These findings imply that drugs that stabilize cardiovascular function and improve endothelial cell dysfunction might improve prognosis, independent of the utilization of cardiotoxic drug combinations. Our study has several limitations. Thanks to the observational study design, we cannot exclude the likelihood of unmeasured confounding factors, although we've reassuringly noted consistency between the first analysis and therefore the propensity score matched analyses. These data don't apply to the utilization of any treatment regimen utilized in the ambulatory, out-of-hospital setting. Randomized clinical trials are going to be required before any conclusion is often reached regarding the benefit or harm of those agents in COVID-19 patients. We also note that although we evaluated the connection of the drug treatment regimens with the occurrence of ventricular arrhythmias, we didn't measure court intervals, nor did we stratify the arrhythmia pattern, such as torsade de points. 
In summary, this multinational, observational, real-world study of patients with COVID-19 requiring hospitalization found that the utilization of a regimen containing hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine with or without a macrolide was related to no evidence of benefit but instead was related to a rise within the risk of ventricular arrhythmias and a greater hazard for in-hospital death with COVID-19. These findings suggest that these drug regimens shouldn't be used outside of clinical trials and urgent confirmation from randomized clinical trials is required. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more recommendations on health, relationship, lifestyle and other helpful information to make life easier.